In this video, Phil and I are going to show you the ins and outs of Power BI shape maps, including how to coordinate the colors in a table to the colors in the map based on the values, how to assign colors to a legend, including what not to do with colors, and how to assign a specific color based on a text field. First things first, because shape maps are a preview feature, they're not automatically enabled in your Power BI desktop. You have to turn them on. And to do this, you come up to File, Options and Settings, Options. Then under Preview Features, you need to check Shape Map Visual. Once you've clicked OK, you'll have to restart Power BI Desktop. But once you do that, then like me, you should have a Shape Map icon in your Visualizations area. The first map I'm going to create is going to show me the population distribution in Australia by state and territory. This is a typical use for a Shape Map to visualize the distribution of a variable. I'm going to use data that I've gotten from Wikipedia from uh, the year 2020. So I'm going to enter the data. Just paste it in here. I'm going to rename the table Australia. Now I can add the shape map and get the default placeholder. Add the population values. We get the default map of the US. Add the states and territories. And you'll notice that Washington has been colored in here. So what's happened is Western Australia in Oz and Washington both have the same abbreviation WA. With this default map, Power BI is doing its best to match up the data it's given with the map that's on the canvas. So it thinks the uh, data for WA Western Australia is Washington. Now I can fix this by removing the state territory from location and using the ISO codes, the International Standards Organization codes. And we'll pop those into the locations. And you'll see now that uh, Power BI realizes that I'm actually trying to plot data for Australia, not America. So nothing happening in this map here. I'll mention a little bit more about ISO codes later on. But for now, let's get rid of this map by changing it to Australia. And there we go. Now, because I've got a map of Australia up on screen, I can remove the ISO codes and then add back either the state territory, which is the abbreviations for the states, or I can put in the actual full state territory names. Power BI knows what I'm doing here because it's data for Australia and I've got a map of Australia, so there's no confusion. If you are using a map that has place names or place name abbreviations that aren't unique, then you can check the map keys to see the list of identifiers the map understands. As you can see here, there's a column for the ISO state and territory name. So I know that by using this, uh, Power BI will know that this data is for Australia. But obviously, as I'm only using a map of Australia, I don't need to use the ISO codes here. So I've got my map of Australia. Uh, I don't have any labels for the data though, so I'm not really seeing the full picture about the population distribution. In practice, the map won't be on its own. It'll be used in conjunction with other visuals. So that will give you the missing information like the state and territory names and the populations. To help me out here, I'm gonna add a table and then add the state territory names and the population. Just shrink that down a bit, bring it over, sort by population. And I'll turn off those totals. Okay, so New South Wales, there's New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland, WA, South Australia, Tassie, the ACT and Northern Territory. So this is good, but I can still make it a little bit better. First off, I'm going to make the population column. I'll add the commas in there so the numbers will be easier to read. And with the table, if I add some color here, then I can tie that to the map. So I'm going to add some conditional formatting, background color for the state territory name. And I'm going to format by color scale, values only. And it's going to be based on the field population. That's going to default to the uh, sum summarization. And I'm going to leave the minimum and maximum as they are. Click OK. Now you can see that the colors in the state territory name column match the colors on the map. 
I can do the same thing for population, conditional formatting, background color, color scale, population. Okay, brilliant. So the table is now helping me visualize the colors that I'm seeing in the map. If I select a state, then that's highlighted in the map, but just notice that the color of that state is not the same as when there is nothing selected. Nothing selected, click on Tasmania, and Tasmania's color changes from light blue to the deep blue. Now this is because on the map, if I come over here to the data colors, I haven't specified anything in the minimum and maximum. I've left this up to Power BI to decide what to do. And what it's doing is, it's setting the color dependent on what is selected. At the moment, with nothing selected, the minimum value is the uh, lowest value for the population, which is 246500, and the maximum is the just over 8 million there for New South Wales. But when I select Tasmania, the maximum value here is 541071, so Tasmania gets colored that deep blue. Now, to prevent this happening, select the map again and in the minimum and maximum I'm going to enter the values of the minimum and maximum populations. So minimum is 246500 and maximum 8166369. Now the map colors are exactly as they were before but when I select Tasmania it stays that same light blue color. So if you want your map colors to stay the same as when nothing is selected remember to set those minimum and maximum values. Okay, let's look at uh, using our own colors now and not letting Power BI set them for us. So if I come over to data colors, so it's the blue that we've just used in the last example. If I go in here and then choose my own colors, yeah, it looks pretty ugly pretty quickly. And if you choose dissimilar colors, it's really difficult to tell what's going on in the map. I've no idea what information it's trying to convey. Same thing if you turn on diverging colors, it just looks a mess. So you're better off leaving it as the default settings and let Power BI decide what to do. Let's just revert this to the default. Okay, that looks a bit better. Let's look at using the legend. Now, if I drag in the state territories to legend, well, again, we've lost the message here of what we're trying to convey. There's nothing there that really tells me about the population densities. However, if the intention was to convey to the viewer the names or maybe the abbreviations of the states then yes I guess that achieves its aim but if you have uh, too many things in the legend then it's going to get very messy very quickly. Thanks for that Phil. Now so far Phil has shown us how to visualize numeric data in a shape map but for our last example let's say I want to see a color-coded map displaying which political parties have been elected to which states and territories. Now, currently in Australia, we only have two parties in power, Labour and the Liberals, as you can see in this table. To create a map visual color coded based on the party in power isn't obvious. I'll start by inserting the map visual. Let's bring it over into view. I'm going to add the state to the location and the elected party is going to go in the legend. We need to change it to the Australia map. And then in the fields, I want to drag in the elected party to the color saturation. You can see it counts the elected party and that's fine. Back in the settings, under data colors, I can simply change labor to red, that's their color, and liberal is a royal blue. I'll turn off the title and we'll let the legend explain what the chart is about. So that's how easy it is to assign colors to text values. Now, you may have noticed that we don't have many shapes to choose from. You can search for these online, but there is a very good repository on GitHub created by David Eldersveld, and there's a link to that in the file that you can download from the video description. I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.